This is the U console by Clockwork Pi. It's actually one of my favorite little devices that I've ever been able to take a look at on the channel. It's actually powered by a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, otherwise known as the CM4. Personally, I love the overall layout and the form factor. It's got a built-in trackball. We've also got a keypad. It does have buttons here for gaming. These can be mapped with any emulator that you're gonna be using with the CM4. I've always considered it a nice little dev terminal or maybe even a cyber deck of sorts. But for the longest time, I've kind of dreamed of having a more powerful CPU in this unit. And until now, it really wasn't possible to have a drop in. But that's all changed since the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the CM5 or the Compute Module 5. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. In this video, we're going to be upgrading the U console from the CM4 to the CM5. And with this upgrade, we should expect anywhere from a two to a three times performance jump, depending on, you know, what we're running, be it CPU or GPU intensive tasks going from the CM4 to the CM5. Now that's if everything works out correctly. And I would have had this video done a lot earlier, but due to the software that they use here with the uh, U console itself from Clockwork Pi, I personally couldn't get everything working more specifically and most importantly, the screen itself and the trackball. So there wasn't much that I could do here, but thanks to an awesome user over on the Clockwork Pi forum who goes by Rex, he's created an image that should theoretically work with the CM5 in the U console. Now, the only unit that I have my hands on right now is the CM5 with four gigs of RAM, which in my opinion is gonna be more than enough for something like this. But the other thing here is this one doesn't support an SD card because it's the eMMC version. And with this, we have 32 gigs of onboard eMMC memory. So we can't use a micro SD card with this, but we can definitely flash the internal storage on the CM5 pretty easily using a relatively inexpensive adapter from Waveshare. This does support mass USB storage with the CM4 and it does work with the CM5. I made sure of that. I've already tested it just to be safe. So the first thing we really need to do here, since we've got a CM5 with built-in eMMC storage, is get the operating system installed on the board itself. So I'm going to move over to another Raspberry Pi 5. This can be done from Windows or a Linux PC. It's really up to you. I've already got a Raspberry Pi 5 set up and we can flash this CM5 directly from there. Now it's time to flash the CM5's internal eMMC. I'll be doing this from a Raspberry Pi 5, but it'll work with Linux. It'll also work with Windows. I've just already had this set up, so I figured I'd go ahead and use it. Unfortunately, at the time I'm making this video, there's no official image for the CM5 that'll work on the U console. But luckily, there's a really awesome community at Clockwork Pi. So right here, Rex has already created an image and I'll leave a link in the description. Want to give them a big shout out because yeah, this is really awesome. I actually tried to get this running when I first got the CM5. Spent a few hours on it, then I kind of gave up. I did get an image to appear over HDMI on the U console, but couldn't get the uh, screen working. USB wasn't working. But luckily, Rex here has put a lot of time into this. This will work for the CM5 and the CM4. And out of the box, it should work for the CM5. If you're looking to get this image for a CM4 on the U console, you may have to comment a few things out. Lots of great information over here. And they also explain that this may work on the dev term, but they no longer have a dev term to really test it out. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, Megalinks, I've already downloaded it. So it's actually Bookworm 6.6. .6. And again, you can get it right here. And in order to flash this to the eMMC, there's a couple things I need to do here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Raspberry Pi imager. I'm just going to be using this. And if I went ahead and plugged this in with the Compute Module Nano B board from Waveshare, nothing's going to show up. And that's because we do need to enable Raspberry Pi boot. So from here, we're just going to go RPI boot. Now you can see it's actually waiting for a connection. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the little Waveshare board with the CM5 connected, USB type C. And as soon as I plugged it in, you can see that it's already searching for it. And you'll be able to tell if it works because it'll show up as kind of a mass storage device. There it goes. So yeah, worked the first time. I'm just going to close this down. Now all we really need to do is flash the image we downloaded. Big shout out to Rex over at the Clockwork Pi forum. I'm going to scroll on down to use custom. We're going to go with that Clockwork Pi Bookworm 6.6. .6. Choose my storage right here, multi-function USB device because we used RPI boot and we'll just flash it. 
So give this a few seconds. Once this is finished, we can actually move back over to the U console and see if this works. Okay, so the flash was successful to the CM5's eMMC. I'll just go ahead and close out of everything and we'll move over to the U console. Now I need to get the old Compute Module 4 out of the U console and install the new CM5. There's a few screws here, it's not too hard to get this thing apart, and like I mentioned at the beginning, this comes as a full kit, so you do have to assemble it once you get it. But it's actually a fun little project that doesn't take more than an hour to put together. Okay, moving in a bit closer. As you can see, we've got two 18650 cells, and these are as old as this unit is, so I probably need to replace these. Up top here, we've got the CM4, and this is exactly how it came from the factory. It's a big glob of some kind of thermal compound on the CPU, and it actually makes contact with the rear half of the shell, which is aluminum, therefore extracting heat from the CPU. Go ahead and take these batteries out. Now we can remove the CM4, and the module is inside of a type of DIM, so this is pretty cool. Let me unplug the Wi-Fi here. Go ahead and eject it. And it's basically a carrier board for the compute module. Go ahead and knock this stuff off. I thought this was really odd, but I will be replacing it with something newer when we put the CM5 in here. And the one thing I'm really worried about with the CM5 in here is obviously battery life. We're basically going to half the battery life on this thing and heat because uh, the CM5 does have a more powerful chip. It's a bit hotter, it's got higher clocks, but I think we might be okay with that rear aluminum shell. It just might get a bit steamy. And my cat just ran in, she's about to knock everything over. So we just snapped it on down, and we'll go ahead and put the carrier board back in the U console. And as you can see, it does fit in here perfectly. I need to plug the Wi Fi antenna in, and again, the CM5 that I have here has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Get that wire out of the way so it's not pinched when we put the rear shell back on. Now I need to worry about heat from this CM5. So I'm gonna be using a piece of conductive material that I've actually had for a little while. Kind of saved it for a special occasion like this, but yeah, the whole rear shell is aluminum and that's gonna extract as much heat as it can out of the CM5. Go ahead and place this right on the CPU. This was a piece that I really couldn't use for anything else because it's much thicker, but that way it makes contact with the rear shell. I'm gonna put these batteries back in here. And again, I mean, these are about two years old now, so they're not holding a great charge. I really can't do any battery life testing right now. I did order some new 2000 milliamp hour batteries. They should be here in a couple days and I will come back to this thing. And yeah, that uh, therm and yeah, that thermal pad that I used actually works great. It will squish down just a bit on top of that uh, CM5 CPU. We'll just get this thing put back together and I'm not gonna fully assemble it because I probably have to pull it back apart and make sure everything's in place. I'll just put two screws in it for now. And now for the moment of truth. Oh wait, let me plug this in because I know those batteries are low. Okay, so up top, we've got our power button. And we've got our green LED indicator. We'll see what happens. Coming back over, I had to pull this thing apart and make sure I had the LCD ribbon cable seated. I think we're good to go. And it's probably not going to work. There we go. Okay, awesome. So we do have the LCD working at least. Maybe? Yeah, so this is going to boot up for us. And I will have to go through the basic setup process with this image. And the trackball is working. So this is a lot further than I was able to get it with an image I was trying to build. I couldn't get the LCD or the trackball working. I had to do everything over HDMI. So we'll just go through the setup real quick, get into the desktop. So it looks like everything's working here. Trackball, brightness control on that LCD, the backlight for the built-in keypad. The only thing that's not working is sound. And it's not the developer's fault. It's actually the Raspberry Pi Foundation's fault. They have not finished the driver yet for the CM5. So a lot of developers have been running into this issue. 
and it was really odd that they released it without that finished driver. A uh, little upset about that, but yeah, I mean, hopefully that is fixed in the future. First thing I just wanted to throw at this was a little bit of PSP emulation. We've got Tekken 6 here, 2x resolution, and on the CM5 CPU, which is basically the same thing as the Raspberry Pi 5, we're seeing some great performance here. I mean, running at full speed. The built-in controls on the U console are definitely usable for games like this, but you know, it was really never meant to be a full-fledged gaming machine. And I can tell that the rear on this is getting a lot warmer than it did with the CM4, and that's kind of a given. I mean, this thing does draw a lot more power, especially when you're loading up that CPU and GPU. Next up, a little bit of video playback, and you know, on the CM5, again, same thing as the Raspberry Pi 5 CPU, I've noticed that we get some really great 1080p playback. This is only a 720p display, so I mean, it's going to run through full 60 FPS. Looking good here. So obviously, the CM5 is working with the U console, thanks to Rex's image that we used here, and I'm really happy that he built this. Been looking forward to upgrading the CPU in this thing, and just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, power consumption and performance versus the CM4. With this HPL test on the CM4, around 12 gigaflops, on the CM5, around 31. That's a pretty big jump when it comes to CPU performance here. When it comes to GPU performance, using GLMark ES2 on the CM4, we score around 750. On the CM5, that's up to 1920. So obviously with CPU and GPU performance, that CM5 does have the CM4 beat. But what about power consumption? Because that's going to be big when it comes to a battery powered device like this. At idle, the CM4 draws 2.5 watts and the CM5 draws 2.3. Now this is just from the CM4 and the CM5. It's not total draw from the battery on the U console. So at idle, it looks like the CM5 is drawing less, but as soon as we put a load on the CPU and GPU, that's where everything kind of flip flops because the CM5 can draw much more, actually almost double power draw here. So on the CM4 at full boat, 4.7 watts, the CM5 draws 8.6. Now, all of that wattage does transfer over to heat. Remember, we're passively cooling this with the rear shell of the U console. And while the CM5 didn't hit thermal throttle, you can see that it is coming in hotter. 30 minute video playback test, the CM4 only hit 51 degrees Celsius, while the CM5 came in at 64 degrees Celsius. And with a video playback test, it's not hitting up that CPU and GPU up to 100% continuously. So both of these will get hotter and I will run another test down the road. I want to wait until I get those new batteries in so we can also run a battery life test on the CM4 and the CM5. I mean, I know which one's going to come ahead, but one thing we could do on the CM5 is actually underclock it and still get better performance than the CM4. So we will take a look at all of that in a future video. Should have those batteries in a couple days. But so far, I mean, the Compute Module 5 is working in the U console. We've got a nice performance upgrade on the CPU and GPU. I want to give a big shout out to Rex over on the Clockwork Pi community forum because I wouldn't have had this running just yet if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much. And if anybody else wants to get a hold of that image for, let's say, their CM4 or even upgrading to a CM5, I'll leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I've been wanting to do this for a while now. And if there's anything else you want to see tested on the U console between the CM4 and the CM5, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.